Good everyone, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So what I'll do today, um, I wanted to discuss briefly about the data literacy. Now, you must be wondering why I'm talking about the data literacy, right? The reason why, because we're doing an AI course, right? AI associate course, and the data plays a very important role. And not just the data, the right amount of data, the clean data, right? Um, so um, you might wonder, right? Okay, so we have a lot of data, uh, in place, is there any way I can uh, leverage an existing technology out there in the market which help us to visualize the data, right? Because obviously, just having a raw data in uh, in a system is not enough, right? You need to have the visual representation of the data. So if you're talking from a Salesforce aspect, then uh, you can use Tableau. Um, there are other tools out there, but Tableau is very uh, popular uh, tool which help you with the data visualization though you can use uh, other frameworks right if you don't there are open source frameworks as well um, so that's one way you can visualize the data using a tool right which is useful uh, now the biggest challenge if you ask any machine learning engineer right having it just the data is not enough having a raw data is not enough that the data needs to be cleaned right so the data cleaning is a very important aspect. So when you are doing a data cleaning, right, there are certain things you need to be asking yourself. At the right kind of question, what is that I'm going to achieve using this data? What's the purpose of the data cleaning? What I'm going to infer from this data? What's the functionality I'm looking for from this data? And what's the thing I'm going to measure using the data, right? For instance, um, uh, if you wanted to um, measure, let's say, uh, the number of people uh, who died uh, because of, say, lung cancer in 2023, you need to have the right data associated with the lung cancer, you know, in terms of maybe lung tissue or uh, or the, the pattern of the people, maybe the smoking pattern or people who work in the coal mines or people who work in, uh, in an industry where they're exposed to dangerous uh, chemicals, right? So all those factors. So, uh, so if you are a data analyst, right, you should be asking the question: What I'm trying to get out of this data? Am I trying to find out the, the number of people who died um, because of uh, X, Y, Z factor in 2023, or I'm out? I'm trying to find the root cause of the lung cancer, right? So you could say the exposure to the dangerous chemicals, smoking, right? Some people who work in the coal mines. So if you have that, uh, the right mindset to ask the right question, you can really work well with the data because this is very important for, from a data analyst perspective to ask the right question, right? If you don't ask the right question, the data will be sitting there and you're not going to get any business value out of there. Okay, so that forms a part of a data cleaning, right? So if you're asking the data cleaning question, now you must be wondering, hmm, so you just now mentioned that I should be asking the right question, but why does the data cleaning is important? I have a data there. I'm a data analyst, so I should be asking the right question, right? That's right. You sh it, it, if you look at from a 10,000 feet view, you might think, hmm, it's got nothing to do with the questions I'm asking, but if you, if you dig deeper, they are related to each other. So I explain how. Let's say I have a data set, right? So I have a data set which contain uh, information about, um, say, the lung cancer patients, right? So it contains information about maybe, say, lung tissue, um, um, the smoking pattern, right? Um, what's that called? Uh, exposure to uh, dangerous chemical right okay so let's say um, and maybe I mean I'm not a doctor so I can't really give you a very good example but I try my best right okay so the lung tissue let's say for whatever reason um, the day uh, the measurement is say if it's Okay, let's forget about the lung tissue for now. 
because I don't know how to explain using a lung tissue, but because I don't know what's the measurement to use to, to predict uh, whether it's a cancer or non-cancer. Let's say um, the lung tissue with the value, say, X uh, or above, greater, describe it's a cancerous tissue, or if it's less than, it's, ben, uh, it's benign. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not cancerous, right? X could be anything. So just don't quote me saying, hey, this guy talking BS because I, like I said, I'm not a doctor, but just wanted to give you uh, this understanding from a data perspective, right? So my intention is to make you understand why data literacy is important, right? That's so, okay. The smoking pattern, let's say people who smoke like um, 20 cigarettes in a day, and there are people who smoke less than 20 cigarettes in a day, uh, greater than or equal to less than okay exposure to danger uh, dangerous chemical let's say uh, five times in a day and less than say five times right okay now imagine you have this data right and if you have a clean data it's easy for you to predict a model to say hey someone say exposed to uh, so smoke greater than 20 cigarettes a day and exposed to or exposed to let's say five times dangerous chemicals in a day and let's say or lungs tissue maybe greater than or equal to x so there is a high chance that this cap person uh, struggled with the lung cancer right so this model can be used to train your model to to detect if a person is prone to lung cancer something like that right now imagine you have a messy data where a lot of information is missing right so for instance instead of five it says number five right internal smoking pattern some place it's say greater than 20 some says 21 some says six in a form of a character so that is not really a great representation of a data because you have different data types now right you're dealing with the string you're dealing with the numbers uh, or or sometimes uh let's say 20.888 what does that even mean in how many in, the number of cigarettes you smoke in a day, 20.88888. Does that even make any sense? Not really. Are you saying 20 and a half? You spoke part of a cigarette? You spoke 20 cigarettes? And then what about the extra one? Is it part or half or semi or quarter? Who are we talking about? So we need to round up to that, let's say, a 21, or let's keep it as 20, right? 20.1, 20, 20.8, 21. So you need to have the data cleaning in place. So to do, do that, we cannot use real or float. We have to have a numbers, right? So that's why the, it's very important you talk about the data types, right? The data types will help you with the cleaning process, right? The string or bool or, or, you know, or other stuff. And now that's great. So, so, what, so you have a data, so which was not clean. You clean the data using a right amount of tool, a right tool. Um, now, um, and you have also identified um, the right data type, and you you clean the data based on that. Data good to go. Now, does the data volume uh, matters when it comes to uh, model? Yes, absolutely. I mean, if you have tens and thousands of data, it's your model will train in a very efficient way compared to like few hundred data. Right. So, but that being said, it's 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 a misconception to say that you need to train your model with the millions and millions of data set to make it more efficient. It's not really true, though, right? I mean, you can train with thousands of data set, then you can fine tune it as per the response. So, um, so yes, a large data volume matters, um, but that is it's not the only thing that matters. So. The data cleaning uh, part is sorted. Uh, we have analyzed the right amount of data type that's sorted, um, and to train the model with the right data that's sorted. Right now, um, you must be wondering. Um, okay, so do you have to worry about a machine learning problem? Right, what kind of model is it? Supervised or unsupervised? I've covered that. So if you have a label data set, right, you're mostly looking after the supervised. You have classification problem. You have linear regression classification. If you wanted to identify 
you know, uh, whether you have a data set arranged in a categories, right? For instance, um, is this person uh, cancerous or is this person non-cancerous? If you wanted to identify that, you can use a classification problem. But if you wanted to identify, let's say, the price of a house based on the location, based on the other data, then you normally talk about linear regression problem, provided you have a label data set, right? If you do not have a label data set, then you're normally talking about unsupervised machine learning model, which is very common though, uh, right? So I don't really want to get into that because this is, like I said, it's not a machine learning course, but it's good to know, right? Some of the terminology. Then we have reinforcement learning, which is another thing, right? Then we get into the deep learning where neural network comes into picture, right? So neural networks, uh, you know, convolution neural network and different aspects comes into equation. So, um, so these are a different areas of artificial intelligence. If you're interested, you can check it out. Um, you know, if you wanted to work on a model, if you wanted to work on the deep learning model, it's very important that you understand some of the algorithms. I, I don't care what people say is, hey, you don't need to know uh, the algorithm, then you won't really become a good AI engineer. You just become a tool user, right? It's, it's pointless. Uh, so in, think about it, in the age of artificial intelligence, what added benefit you can offer if you're just going to be a tool user, right? So you need to think about it from that perspective. All right, sorry, Dr. So we got a data, so we cleaned it, um, and we decided for what problem we want to solve, classification on. Now, there's one thing you might uh, encounter a lot um, in statistics, uh, even machine learning, mean, median, standard deviation. Okay, so you might have studied in your high school, so let's go back to the high school, right? So what is uh, mean, yeah? Mean, median, and SD, right? Standard deviation. Okay, so let's talk about the mean. Let's say you have number one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah? Um, or let's say one. Okay, so if you wanted to calculate the mean, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. One plus two uh, plus, uh, sorry. Uh, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, divided by number of uh, digits, right? That is 5. So that will give you, let's say, MD. That will give you uh, your mean. Okay. Now, what is a median? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So in that, just look at the middle number. That's a simple thing. So you separate two out, separate four and five. So you're left with three. I'm giving you a very, very uh, basic example, right? A lot of, if you look at uh, Python, right? Um, Python is a very uh, popular uh, language, especially when it comes to um, uh, machine learning and statistics. You have NumPy, you have, sci -fi, uh, you have NumPy libraries. And if you don't want to use Python, you can also use um uh java you can use and you can also use swift the swift is at the, in, if you look at tensorflow right uh, you can use swift in the tensorflow so you can use or you can use pytorch so um that is uh different frameworks you can leverage to do different things um so but that being said right i mean if you can build all of this stuff using you know core python um, so you don't, and or you can use Keras. Uh, there is one book I will recommend uh, after this, uh, if you wanted to check out. I have this book. It's a pretty good book. I often refer to it if I wanted, if I got stuck with some machine learning stuff. So this is how you calculate the median. Uh, so now the standard deviation is pretty interesting. Standard deviation is usually you do. Uh, okay, I'll just cancel it. So remember the value we got from. Um, mean right so standard division is let's say you wanted to calculate the standard division of one two three four five right so it's simple you just do the square root of and you put in the bracket and you say uh let's say five minus and the mean whatever you got the value here because we are dealing with the same number right one two three four five so the mean of this uh, mean of this number and square plus you can take four. I'm just going backward. You can go forward. It's just minus uh, mean 
and the square root plus so on till you get one minus yeah I uh, mean uh, square uh, square this and then divided by total number that's five or about five okay divided by. so that is how you do the standard deviation so um you might have studied in your high school so i thought it might be good to cover um so yeah this is how you do it but normally they won't ask you in your certification it's just for your own reference so i often tell people right don't learn things just for the sake of certification this is one of the biggest problem i've seen in salesforce ecosystem people get a lot of certification and they struggle with it i i personally can't tell you right how frustrated i get when people come to me with a lot of certification they couldn't answer the freaking fundamental question then i question them why do you have so many certifications right if you can't even answer a basic thing like especially in the security space I've seen people struggle a lot in Salesforce security. And this is really frustrating to me when I work with somebody or when I interview someone and I give you a simple problem and they say, hey, I got 20 certs, I got 30 certs, right? That's fine for me, sir. Your cert is irrelevant if you can't prove me, in your, if you can't deliver this stuff, right? It's like uh, looking at the burger when you go to McDonald's, right? And But you can't eat it, what's the point, right? Or you can say Ferrari without an engine, it's pointless. So that's why I tell you that when you learn for cert, cert, it's fine, focus on cert. That's nothing wrong with that. But just don't learn just for the sake of getting certification. Learn it for your own sake to, to do something out of it, right? Just say that you want to learn. Okay, let me ask you one thing. Why do you want it to take this AI cert? You know, just a question. I mean, you can put your response in the comment if you like. Why do you want it to do this cert? Just don't tell me I wanted to find a job. That's a BS reason, right? I don't care. I'm not teaching people so that you can go and find a job. I'm teaching people so that you can add a business value to a company you're going to work. Think about that way. You wanted to take a search so that you can learn stuff so you can add a business value, right? You can add a value to the organization you work for, right? You can come up with a new suggestion. You can come up with, you know, new solution. You can recommend your business new solution. If you're using Salesforce, if you're a Salesforce house, it's good to recommend Salesforce product if you understand the capability and the licensing model, right? Very important. And the skill set in the house. It's another thing that you have a cool stuff in the market, but you don't understand what it does, the licensing model, and you don't have the capability in your team to deliver the stuff. It's pointless. You're recommending anything, right? So I often see people get, it's not only with the Salesforce though, I've seen with the AWS, I've seen with Azure, people are more interested to learn the tools it's all right. You can learn the tool. It's like a carpenter. You know how to use a carpenting tool. But if you don't know how to do with that, use the tool, then what's the point? Right? So the only reason why I got into AI because I wanted to do the climate change stuff, right? That's something I'm passionate about. So I do, I built climate change models. It's a use case for me because I can serve the community. I can serve my nation. I can serve, you know, the world using my model. I can I can help with the climate change cause. So I have that cause in mind. So that's my vision. You know, one day my foundation will become one of the biggest climate change foundation on the planet. That's my vision because I wanted to help people. And as a charity foundation, right, we don't charge people money. People give us the money to do the stuff. And we, you know, that's why I just write books and, and I do vlogs and kind of stuff, right? So... So that's what I'm trying to say, right? Sorry, I digress. And you might think this guy talk blah, blah, blah. But I just wanted to make sure, you know, just to realize why you wanted to do the set, right? Just don't say, I wanted to do the set for a job. That's that's not a good reason. That's really not a good reason, right? So, yeah, think about it. Right. So that's from a data literacy perspective. I hope you understood what I'm trying to cover. So it's important, right? You have a data set. You need to clean the data set. Get it up to the normal and uh, normalize the data and then train your model and then understand the error that generates. Like if your input and expected output does not match, then there's an error. Try to fix the error and then retrain your model. And then obviously your model will become uh, will reach to a stage where your model could able to uh, transform the data to the form which is uh, which is acceptable, right? You normal, right? So that's all I wanted to talk in this episode. I hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday. Adios.